Hello, today I wanted to go over Panofsky's Three Levels of Iconography because it has to do with the tagging and description of your museum objects. So, when we're talking about iconography, we're talking about three different levels of description. And according to Panofsky, there are, there's, the first level is a primary and natural subject matter. This is factual or expressional information. The secondary one or is called the conventional subject matter or it's about the conventional subject matter. It talks about images, stories, allegories. Uh, typically uh, people within the museum world or information professionals will have a secondary degree um, and demonstrate evidence of studying the information that pertains to your museum object uh, to get at the subject matter. And then the third level con constitutes the intrinsic meaning or content, which is really hard to describe because um, this does involve the world of symbolic values, uh, which is uh, which can be which one can get at, but um, it's difficult when trying to describe an object, according to Panofsky. And then one thing I want to make note of is the ofness and aboutness of an object. Ofness, what Panofsky was referring to with this is what is the object um, made of, what, what is it, basically. It's a description. And the aboutness, this means um, words are applied to an object to describe what the object is about. And there are, there's one other thing that I need to get at too, but we'll discuss this with the pre-iconographical or first level of description according to Panofsky. And this is the uh, primary or natural subject matter of a museum object. And this is called, it's the interpretation of any object by any individual and at this level it's called the pre-iconographical. So when we're talking about the interpretation of a museum object at the pre-iconographical level and we're utilizing factual elements composed within the information objects, uh, what we're talking about are two different types of description. Uh, one is based upon written text and the other is about imagery. When we're talking about factual elements, with objects with uh, writing on it. Typically when describing that object, the um, museum professional or the information professional extracts the words that are written on the object and uses it as a tag or a descriptive term to describe that object. When we're talking about um, an object without any writing on it, pictures, uh, pictorial objects, we are describing that object by applying terms or descriptive tags to them. So at the pre-iconographical level, we're going to talk, we're going to be faced with when we describe the factual information of an object, is a writing on that object? And did you, when describing that object, extract the words or text on that object and use it as a tag or a descriptive term when describing that object? If so, then there's very little um, interpretation uh, as Panofsky would say, uh, with the primary or natural subject matter of that, that object. Uh, however, when we do apply objects to museum objects that have, when we apply descriptive terms to museum objects without text, there is going to be a little bit more, um, there's going to, there's going to be less consistency when we apply descriptive terms to what that information object is about because that meaning is being applied to objects. However, either way, at the pre-iconographical level, the meaning of an object is the primary, consists of the primary natural subject matter of that object and therefore uh, it is interpreted as the, uh, the pre-iconographical level of description. So when we're talking about, as I already alluded to, at the pre-iconographical level of analysis, we describe what an object is of and what it's about. So the factual information represents an object at the pre-iconographical level. And questions that you can ask yourself are, what is the object made of? What was the object used for? What is this object? That's what it's of, right? Of, and this is the factual meaning. 
Uh, when describing the aboutness at the pre iconographical level of description, we're applying words to the object that expresses a mood or emotion. So that's the aboutness. Alright, so the iconographical level of interpretation is the second level of interpretation, and uh, Panofsky says it deals with images, stories, or and allegories instead of motifs, and presupposes a familiarity with the subject or theme. So this is the conventional subject matter, um, usually um, a person that's working in a museum or an archive or something like that, uh, that information professional or the museum curator has a history of or has, prim has factual information or has studied uh, whatever the up subject matter is at hand, whether it's um, cuneiform script, uh, Egyptology, or anything like that. Uh, that's how we get at the, the um, iconographical analysis of interpretation when we're talking about um, describing an object at this level. And again, ofness and aboutness of an object. Uh, remember, with text, with when you have museum objects with text versus without text, that represents or adds another layer of interpretation to that object. Uh, we can identify at the iconographical analysis um, to specify what a picture is of, but also perceived allegories, personifications, and symbols. So, a person studying the subject matter of say Egyptian text can get at what those symbols are um, with those on those texts on the on the Egyptian hieroglyphics and stuff like that. But when we're describing the aboutness of an object again at this level it's going to be different because we're applying uh, terms to an object which represents ambiguity and when we're discussing um, indexing terms simply because uh, people are going to apply um, a wider variety of descriptive terms to an object when describing what it's about, right? It's all about previous experience in one's own world and applying those previous experiences to that object when describing the aboutness of that object. And the iconological interpretation of an object is a third level of meaning and it requires one to have an intrinsic meaning or content constituting the world of symbolic values. And this is harder to get at when applying descriptive terms uh, to an object, whether it's at the ofness or the aboutness, or if you're trying to describe writing versus pictorial information, uh, due to the fact that according to Panofsky, um, this constitutes the intrinsic meaning of, uh, of an object and different civilizations, dependent upon what that cultural context is, uh, can get at that information differently, meaning that one person from one culture or even your next door neighbor is going to describe that object differently than uh, what you would describe it as. So the level of consistency when applying descriptive terms to any museum object at this level you're probably going to have about a 33% similar, 33 percent of having a similar term applied to that object as somebody else's. Alright, and then ofness and aboutness. If anybody wants uh, this article uh, by Sarah Shatford Lane, uh, please just let me know and I'll send it to you. Uh, she did her doctoral study on the ofness and aboutness of information objects. Actually, she did an inter-indexing consistency study and so did I for my dissertation at christineangel.org about um, uh, the ability for one to index what an object is of, what it's made of, what it was used for, uh, the aboutness of the object. Uh, the inter-indexing consistency study um, is, it, it represents how inconsistent we as human beings are when describing what an object is of or what it's about especially at the iconological uh, level of interpretation, just because we all have different viewpoints on what an object or a museum object could possibly mean. And then one last thing is that when we're describing um, a theory, when we're prescribing Panofsky's theory of iconology around representation, he um, 
he provided his theory based upon um, what is um, what an object is about about via con convection versus projection. So he says, and this is kind of what I was talking about, with textual objects or words or objects with words on them, the meaning of an object is der derived from the words contained within the object and are used to assign meaning to that object. Pictures, on the other hand, are projections of the object itself and have many different meanings assigned to them. So the textual objects and pictures, when we apply, apply, this is the theory that Panofsky is applying to um, his three different levels of iconography when he says this is how human beings describe objects. So it's textual objects versus pictures and then applying those differences in uh, description uh, at the uh, three different levels of uh, interpretation or, or iconography. And here's a summary of the table that I just went over uh, with primary, secondary, and then the intrinsic meaning and the pre-iconographical, iconographical, and icon iconological representations of interpretation. And why is this important for this uh, Padlet assignment coming up? Because your assignment is about uh, tagging your objects with meaning. So here is the Padlet's quest team pages that we went over during the um, first time that we met for our synchronous Zoom session. And this is what you're supposed to be getting done now, right? So there are nine teams with uh, different people assigned to each team, right? And so when you go into your Padlet page, and this is how I'm greeting my students from St. John's University. When we go into the Padlet page, we see, if it ever opens up, uh, the different descriptions that people are applying to their museum objects. Uh, all right, hang on. So now that I'm finally back on Padlet, as you guys are uploading your objects uh, to your Padlet page and you're describing them, please keep in mind that um, you are going to, whether you know it or not, you're applying Panofsky's three different levels of description uh, to your information objects. So as I'm going through your pages, please note that this assignment is coming due. And it took me a few different, um, it took me a few different teams, ah, here we go, uh, to find out who's doing what. So I love the hashtags here. I, this is great. Um, make sure you're keeping, a, you're keeping in mind that as you're going through and you're tagging different people's objects within your quest team groups, keep in mind a theme, right? Because what you want to do is narrow down and then find a connection uh, between and among all of your members in your uh, quest team in terms of what are some of these common themes that you are starting to be able to assess through your descriptors or your hashtags that you're assigning to each of your objects, okay? That's the first goal. Post, ah, here's nice, and a very nice quest team one. Post your objects, hi, now, post your objects, assign descriptors, this is perfect. Right here, this is um, exactly what you wanna be doing. You're, you're saying why you chose the object. This is a first stage, very, very good. So your next, your next, uh, your next task to think about as you're going through your objects, I'm very, very impressed by this work, is to think about, okay, what are some of the words which you're already doing that I can pull out of here? Uh, and I'm already seeing it, that produces a common theme. Uh, writing is what I'm seeing. That is a great theme that you guys in Quest Team 1 could be applying to your uh, museum exhibit. It's about different cultures and, and writing, your, the, the written text, the written word. I love it. Okay, so I hope that this presentation helps a little bit in terms of what you're supposed to be doing with inner Quest Team groups for the first uh, challenge because, um, or the second challenge, we're on the second challenge, because pretty soon, in the next 
um, and fr on Friday, and then our next ace and the, the next synchronous Zoom presentation. You're going to be starting on the next step, right, of your um, your Quest Team uh, projects. So thank you for your time, and I will have this video posted shortly, and I'll talk to you later.